smuggle drugs and alcohol into prison. But I've never seen so much drugs. You could go to prison and not take drugs and come out a full blown crackhead. It's just actually disgusting to hear that. Prison is full of corruption. It was known that drugs was being smuggled in food and then it swallowed down in condoms. The guards wouldn't do nothing about it. When I was about 12, I started selling cannabis within my school. After a while, I started linking with people on the estate. I realised that there was a market in my area to move up the scale. So I was a drugs runner, county lines runner. I was going in and around England, dropping off bigger packages of crack and heroin. What was most appealing to you with selling drugs? I didn't want market trainers no more. I didn't want 30 pound trainers. That was just it. Whatever I wanted, I could have it. From the drugs and I could make anything up to like a thousand pounds in a day. So I was selling drugs 24 hours around the clock, seven days a week. The morning that I got called as I stepped off the train, three police officers have approached. How long did you get? I got four years. I was incarcerated for the misuse of drugs, crack, heroin, so class A and class B, and I even got done with the, the cannabis as well. And that's your first? That was my first prison sentence, mm. yeah. Were you scared? The first day when I got into prison, this officer's rattled the keys, she's opened the door, and I've looked in, got a sack over my shoulder. The woman's opened the door, and it's like a cave, it's black. I can just see this pale face beaming from the bed. The tear just ran down my eye, just went on the floor. I said my first three days, you didn't hear me say nothing. Living with these people, so to speak, in an enclosed space, what sort of things did you see? There was an inmate who was seen as top dog. The reason I say top dog is because this woman ran the functioning of the prison. So I was doing landscaping and um, the officer that was uh, in charge of landscaping, I would realise that every day we would go to check in, get our equipment and get our tasks for the day. The prison officer wouldn't be the person who managed that. It would be this woman, top dog, who will tell us we're over here today. If there was ever a problem, that top dog would deal with the issue. Anything that you wanted to do, she would communicate through her first, she had the overall say. Say so jump, you would say how high. That's how it was. She's caused standoffs for days, caused other people to be harmed. The running of how things, narcotics come into the, the prison. The prison officer, he didn't say much. He used to get taken advantage of, spoken to disrespectfully, put down, undermined. He, he turned a blind eye to something that he knew wouldn't be able to fix. This prison officer knows the repercussions or the outcome of rebelling against this person. Women can turn the prison upside down on the sale of this one woman. The prison is full of drugs. It was crack, heroin, but I've never seen so much drugs in an institutional establishment. I've come to the worst place to try and reform because drugs is all over this place. You could go to prison and not take drugs and come out a full-blown crackhead. So you'd say in the prison that you were detained at, mm -hmm. there was a lack of duty of care towards, yeah. you know, uh, drug reform or yeah, yeah, the yeah, well-being yeah. of the inmates. And the reason I say that is, well, the guards would see people throwing things over the fence all the time and they wouldn't do nothing about it. The workers don't always go to prison to be the best person or the, the most um, empowering person to the inmate. It's a job, it pays the bills. When you're on visits, um, the, the the visiting hall that drugs was being smuggled in, it didn't have cameras. It was known that drugs was being smuggled in through cups of tea and drank, and then it swallowed down in condoms. The prisoners, they come back to the cell and they're gallonning down litres of water. They start jumping. Start jumping, everyone is jumping. It regurgitates the stomach and all the drugs start rolling out. It's worrying that, you know, head people in charge within the prison system are allowing this to continue, knowing of how it affects everyone involved. Nobody doesn't want to intercept it because it's more harm than good, isn't it?
it's a lucrative business, a lucrative income. It's a, it could be a side hustle for some of the, the prison officers. Eventually, um, kind of got the ropes of how prison works. I started getting involved with smuggling drugs into the prison. Could you give an example? I got wind that there was stuff being thrown over in tennis balls. There's about three other girls that were trying to obtain the tennis ball once it had been thrown over the fence. I'd happened to see one of the girls that, that morning. I would say to the girl, run. And she would run and get the tennis ball. We would do that every day. When you're an enhanced prisoner, you can go back into the block with anything that's found in the outside space. Top Dog was aware that this was happening. But when the drugs was coming back in, it would go to her to then be distributed out within the prison to the other prisoners. I made it very clear to everybody in there. I don't take this stuff. I sell it. New Year's, um, my, myself and my friend, we hatched a plan. Um, smuggling some alcohol. And I built a very good relationship with one of the inmates' mum. Top Dog got wind. That morning we was in the gardens doing the landscaping. She's coming over to us and said, we've heard your plan. So let's go halves. So her mum threw over a litre of vodka in a clear water bottle. And by the end of our shift, she said, yeah, I got it. We've gone back to the block. She's knocked our door, gave us our half of vodka. Just like that. It was funny because we were steaming. We were drunk. And the officer in the next morning said, yeah, we know what you lot got up to. We know about the vodka. Yet again, a blind eye got turned. It's just actually disgusting to hear that. Where is the reform? That's, that's ridiculous. If some officers are not thinking in the way of reform, how can the system reform these people if the people working there don't even believe in reform? Do you think prisons will ever change the way they are? No, I think the thinking of the people leading prisons need to change. It's heartbreaking, to be honest. What would you say to the younger you that just desired the trainers at the time? Boy, I shouldn't have given up on myself when I did. Um, yeah, I shouldn't have given up on myself when I did because I had a lot of promising opportunities ahead of me, but I wouldn't change it because, yeah, this role's been a lot more colourful and the journey's been a very bumpy, so, yeah, it's nice to be on a straight one now, isn't it?